it's not like the TV shows. <laughs> That's oh. a big one for me. Oh, yeah. You Trust don't, me. And you don't know exactly what you want. <laughs> you mean the client comes in yeah. and they like generally yeah, you might it know, multiple times where yeah. they come in? Oh, it's textbook. You can have an image or you can have inspiration or you know you might want a certain feeling when you enter the space. But at the end of the day, you're coming to us. To help elevate that. So, well, and how does that apply to your architecture? Well, all of that, of how does it apply to your budget? It doesn't make sense. You're only doing your kitchen and now you've given the rest of your house an identity crisis. Like, like there's so many moving parts. How does it function? I'm just going to sit in my kitchen because <laughs> I like it better than the living room. Hello, everybody. This is the Winning in Winnipeg podcast, where I talk to top performing business owners, executives, entrepreneurs, and local Winnipeg celebrities. I get to learn who they are and how they think, and I get to hear their perspective about what's really going on in Winnipeg and their businesses. Today, I am lucky enough to have Debbie Golub and Amanda Manouk, the two founders of Design Shop, an interior design firm here in Winnipeg. Design Shop has an incredible reputation in Winnipeg and is often sought after by clients, builders, and architects alike for them to be part of their projects. Amanda and Debbie are not only fun and energetic, but incredible at what they do and bring great principles and values to a very difficult industry. But I'll let them tell you the rest. Ladies, thanks for being here. Thanks for thanks. having us. <laughs> okay, so I will preface this entire thing with we did have technical issues before and the excitement turned into anxiety. And, <laughs> Just a little. Yep, yeah, but I apologize, but I think we're good to go. I think we're all right. Okay, so um, let's start off and don't be nervous. It's really easy. And the questions are really about you guys. They're about design shop there about how you guys came to be and in Winnipeg and how that correlates and relates together. Um, so really like we can start off with design shop, um, uh, for anyone that doesn't know exactly who you are, um, or has worked with you, um, tell us a little bit about design shop and you know, exactly what you guys do. I'll take this one. <laughs> so we are um, a boutique interior design firm in Winnipeg, um, although we do do a lot of work over in Lethbridge, Alberta, and have started to expand doing some work, um, some in Mexico and a little bit in, what was it, Colorado? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, of the Woods. Yeah. yeah. So sort of branching out a that's little bit. Of. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, so I think that's our goal to go a little bit further. We are a group of six right now, six designers, but four of us have been together for nearly 10 years since we started our business. Um, and I would say the four of us have basically known each other I feel like we grew up together in our adult lives. Yeah. So we've either all worked together, found out we're relatives, or gone to school together. So it's a pretty tight knit That's crew. That's right. You two found that out. You didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we're related a few ways, like through marriage. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On both sides of the family. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I found out that I, that, so my wife uh, is from Winnipeg here. I was, lived in Saskatoon. I went to school with a girl. In she was a year older than I was. She ended up moving to Winnipeg, going to uh, Balmoral Hall mm -hmm. with my wife, and I had no idea. So, anyways, I, I meet my wife, and she's like, "Oh, I know this girl. Her name's Kat McSimiak. and uh, I was like, "Oh, I have, I went to school with her. Oh, weird. That's so crazy. Blah blah blah." Later on, it turns out those two are related. Oh, oh, that's Winnipeg. Just weird that, that is her mom so was Winnipeg. Going back in family tree stuff, and it's like back to the Polish-Ukrainian border. And yep, that's Winnipeg. Apparently, my family was one of the founders of Winkler. Hmm. No clue. <laughs> like I know. I'm like, a, do you have a card? No, we're on a plaque. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we're like a Jewish settler there or something. Yeah, I don't know. Winnipeg is so bizarre, but uh, yeah, no. Our firm, like Amanda and I, worked together at two different offices, mm -hmm. and. Just had really good chemistry. We're kind of, we'll always say we're the yang to the yang. Mm -hmm. um, very much. Very much. But at the same time, there's so many things that are exactly the same. Um, yeah. I always knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. So when I did jobs, I always said my goal was to start my own business. So either I was going to be part of a succession plan or buy a company or start mm -hmm. my own. 
And then, yeah, we just started working together and it was time. And then I think we start, it's funny, we started it to be, let's have balance. I want to work three days a week. Yeah, we had no idea. <laughs> yeah. We and had then no we idea. start something and all and that goes out the window. Yeah. Um, and sorry, you might have touched on this, but to answer your question, we do both residential and mm. commercial interior design. Okay. Um, What's more, commercial or residential? About 50-50. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the project size. So right now mm-hmm. we have some really hefty residential yes. work. Mm-hmm. So the hours are going more towards mm-hmm. that and our capacity can't take on as much commercial. But I would say typically mm-hmm. our portfolio is yeah. pretty balanced. Personally, mm. is there a preference between the two? Do you do you enjoy doing residential or enjoy doing commercial for any particular reason? Depends on the client. I was going to say the same thing. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. But they are quite different. And I think that's something that's, or at least was unique to us. I think it's becoming a bit more common, uh, but we were lucky enough to have training in both. Mm. So we really truly understand both. both sides, which not every firm does. Yeah. yeah. Like we didn't come straight out of school. Like we yeah. were, I was like nine and a half years experience prior to, and you were six or seven. Yeah. Because you guys had worked at the same firm. Yeah. Two firms. Prior. Yeah. Two firms. Yeah. Yeah. I followed her. Yeah. <laughs> and then Natasha, who's been with us for nearly 10 years, worked at the, I always say she was the new me. So I had left a firm. She was my replacement. And I worked with her there. Yeah. 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 And so we all sort of went through the same boot camp. Mm-hmm. And then Mel and I were schooled together since 1998. So crazy. Yeah. So it's nice. pretty wild little, little like trust bonds. Like yeah. we, we're like we a little could, family. A little family. That's. That, that's so critical to have in, in I'll, I'll say a, a, a small business is that like the people that you work with and that you see you're with more than probably anyone else. 70% of your life. That's right. So if you don't like each other, <laughs> things get a real dicey really quickly. Yeah. You're poached. Yeah. Well, I think that's something we've felt over the years is because we're so small and so tight, if someone doesn't fit, mm-hmm. it's like very apparent quickly. Mm-hmm. So you've had two people with you for almost 10 years now. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the core four. Mm-hmm. Um, did did you know or did you see them staying with you that long? Was it ever thought of? I think we hoped. Yeah. I don't even think we thought we would be around no, for 10 that's years. That's a good point. <laughs> we, again, had no idea what we were like, let's to. start a business. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we wrote a business plan and it, we surpassed all of our five-year goals within a year and a half. Yeah. So we just, yeah, we had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think our training, like we're, we'll always preach about mentorship. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we try to offer some within, like we've mentored a lot yeah. of our designers um, who are pretty green at the time. And now they're like elevated to senior. Yeah. But we came from mentorship. So some of our employers were like president of PIDM, which is the professional interior design, you know, regulating body in Manitoba or all NCIDQ grads, or, you know, I worked at EQ3 for three years and designed all their stores. So it was like from coming from a brand perspective and learning retail design. So we came from not just like a strong educational foundation, but literally field foundation. Kind of experience, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we came to Design Shop, like our business plan was 200 pages at first because we knew <laughs> so much. Yeah. <laughs> our coach was like, trim the facts. <laughs> yeah. And we really had to edit. But it re- like we were able to deep dive into every worst case scenario that could possibly happen mm-hmm. and know that you can thrive through it. And I think. <laughs> yeah. And I think we've always had big dreams, but I also don't think we I don't know. I never really, I think, thought far enough to think of us being here at almost 10 years. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know. Did you like when we I remember we were sitting by Debbie's pool, like brainstorming about it and. I don't know. It just, it seemed like, let's try it. Like, what do we have to lose? Mm-hmm. Like, and we're like, we're passionate. We think we'll have fun. And we're employable if it doesn't work exactly. out. So we're like, let's yep. give it a go. And yeah, we just did. And then we just kind of kept running. And one thing we talk about all the time is because we're so busy, like we don't take the time to kind of step back and realize what we built. And I think mm-hmm. that's part of it is we've just been in like survival go, go mode. mode. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I never really, at least for me, I've never yeah. taken that step to just say, oh, where will we be in 10 years? Like I... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about a way of imposter syndrome. I think we're starting to get out of it, yeah. but we just recently hired another business coach that knows us because mm-hmm. we've worked with her in a professional capacity. Yeah. 
And, you know, just working on systems, trying to level up in so many different ways, but it's to lean into our value, yep. start to charge how we should be charging. Yep. I know we're not the cheapest today, but it's like we literally can resolve an issue that takes other designers a lot longer. Or prevent. Or prevent, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. We're very proactive. And that's very, very hard to quantify mm-hmm. to, to, tell a, to tell a potential client like, you're not going to have a lot of problems. No. There's going to be there's going to be a few problems because we work with humans, but at the same time, we're not going to hit as many of them. Yeah, we know a lot, and we know a lot about construction yeah. and commercial and residential. So um, I think one of our tools is our drawings, which we can often show clients. Which, when you're comparing side by side to other designers, doesn't always look the same, and you can see the detail and thought we put in in that planning stage, mm-hmm. that proactive stage, so that when you do start construction. You're not sort of backed into a corner with your contractor saying, I need that selection tomorrow right. because we've already thought about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what, what would you say was the hardest part about starting the business versus the hardest part right now? Hmm. I feel like starting it was easy. Like we were blessed that mm-hmm. my dad was a lawyer, a corporate commercial lawyer. So he set mm-hmm. us up corporation wise, yep. shareholders agreement, everything we need to do. And don't have to pay for it mm-hmm. at the time. Very, very lucky. Nice. Yeah. You know, had a lot of schlep too with people who were in the know. And so mm-hmm. we leaned on our supports that way. Yeah. Um, Did you have a good network? Yeah. Or, and early we on, yeah. Yeah. And we also had a good community behind us. Mm-hmm. You know, our Jewish community, when they heard that we started our business, yeah. they wanted to support us. So right away we had work, which is pretty incredible. Um, lots of referrals. But also when we went through, it was quite interesting. So... I had actually been on EI for the first time in my life because of my partner at the time had a massive heart attack. And so I took a little bit of time off and there was this program Mm -hmm. called the self-employment program that was put on by the Y and you had to apply to go there. And so we were the first partnership, like we're your first deal with here today. (laughs) And they accepted us to be part of the program and they set you up with a business coach. They help you write a business plan. They set you up. There's like a two week intensive course where you go through marketing, Excel, bookkeeping, blah, blah, blah. You name it. Like a crash course for business. Yeah. And they pay you to do it. Yeah. So we got paid the EI rate, not a lot. However, whatever work you got that supported your business, you could top it off. So right away we were like making money. Right yeah. away, we weren't feeling the stress of... That was huge. Yeah. So I don't know if it was like serendipitous. I don't know if we were just lucky, but we were pretty resourceful. <laughs> and so, mm-hmm. yeah, we just had a really good kickstart. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. there are so many landmines that if you don't know about them early on, if somebody doesn't teach you about it, if you can't yes. pay somebody to tell you about them or help you with that, then... Like there's a lot of things like who, who was going to teach me about taxes in, in, in regard to business, right? Not Mm -hmm. even personal. Yeah. It's funny looking back and maybe it's just that my memory isn't great, but it didn't seem stressful. Mm -mm. It seemed just very organic and exciting and very exciting. And we were so motivated as we still are, but we were like fresh then. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, we gave it our all and. I honestly don't recall it being like a stressful no. or negative experience in any way at all. That's amazing. Yeah. We kind of liked it. But now I would say there's definitely different challenges now. Mm-hmm. I think it's equally as exciting. Um, but I would say now is definitely more challenging because we're at sort of a different level. And as I mentioned, we haven't had that time to step back, which is partially why we have our new business coach to help us like dream again and and start to make New goal setting and just clean us up a little bit too, so a bit more systematic. Yes. I feel like we do a lot of things with informed intuition. Mm -hmm. So even though we'll do things like discovery with clients, a lot of people have like a checklist. Mm -hmm. We just know it because, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm near 20 years experience. We always get through the checklist, but if you're literally just going through your list, you don't have that dialogue dialogue the trust bonds don't form the more organic conversations where you can land on something new that's off your checklist so i think we're trying to get a few more systems in place oh absolutely well and i think the more efficient we can get with those systems the more creative we can be Mm -hmm. and that's what we we want in the end yeah right so i'd say now it's more difficult but it doesn't seem unmanageable or no retired though we are yeah (laughs) 
That's fair. So is it just thinking about like how to, how do we get to the next level because you guys can you can kind of see another level or is it just the work involved with putting in more systems and processes and and knowing that you have to grow that way? Hmm. I think it's a little bit of both. I agree. Yeah. Like like Amanda said, we don't pause and realize where we've gotten to, mm-hmm. but lately we've been hearing your a top designer in the city, or I've heard your name through blah, 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 like yeah. a pretty reputable person in the city who wants you to work with them. We, we're like, what? Like, <laughs> like, oh, no, we awesome, honestly awesome. have yeah. no okay, idea. Cool. It's really neat. Or if someone's like, oh, I recognize you from social media. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> and now they'll recognize you from a podcast. That's right. There you go. <laughs> so did, so uh, Debbie, you mentioned that uh, you always knew that you wanted or were going to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, was there ever like an aha moment for you that you, you kind of knew that you were either unemployable <laughs> or that you wanted to start your own business? I feel like in some ways it was like situational. Um, so as we mentioned, like we worked together at one firm and when Debbie left, I sort of felt this hole because she was like a mentor and I feel like we were very creative together and we're just different than everyone else there. And so I followed her to her next uh, job. And I think we just sort of had this connection. And when I think about like being an entrepreneur, um, I could never do this alone. Like, I think it was for me, it was like finding Debbie and having this yin yang relationship that we could depend on each other. We had um, like a trust there. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't know that there's that many other people I could see myself doing this with. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I feel like I was lucky to have met Debbie and be in the position where I could take that leap because yeah. otherwise I don't know where I'd be right now, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I completely understand that. And there are, there's probably not many people that I could work with. It's tricky. Well, and the strange thing is, and people don't really realize that Amanda and I never designed together. Not anymore, Mm -hmm. but we work together. So there's, yeah, like professionally when it's working on the business, we collaborate, but when it's working on projects, we don't. So like you guys don't run ideas by each other or they're like pretty separate. Really interesting. At the beginning we did. Yeah. It was just the two 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 of us, but now no. Can you guys look at something and tell the difference? Like, oh, I did that one. I think Debbie so. Debbie did that one. Like yeah, it, I think like to there, some degree. But yeah. I think all of our projects, too, are so different. Right. Yeah. Like, there's such a wide range. Yeah. 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 We cool. also collaborate, like, within the company, too. So, sometimes it's, like, that collaboration. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's always a team per project. Okay. So, we're like, there's always a principal. So, whether it's Amanda or myself on a job with mm-hmm. another designer. So, there's always a team of two. Okay. Sometimes, if the job is... A lot more complex, like we're going through a few right now. We'll pull in other resources Mm -hmm. or other designers here and there um, or contract certain tasks if we need. But at the end of the day, we actually don't because we want to have sort of, we actually don't micromanage at all. But because we're working, if things go sideways or if you need just that extra layer of expertise or, um, well, just for collaboration, like in school, we collaborate. You're mm-hmm. always working on teams. So we just held on to that. We knew it was a successful resource. And Amanda, like her role is more like tech operations mm-hmm. design and I'm more PR marketing design. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we stay in each other's lanes and we trust each other. And yeah. yeah, the chemistry of the designers and de- depends on like where we are in schedule, what the project scope is mm-hmm. or who the client personality is, who does the job. Yeah. Right. We always yeah, want the right fit. That's a big one. Yeah. And, and how back, how far back did your, uh, knowledge of yourself mm. go? Like, was this something from early on? Was it in the teen years where you out selling, uh, Easter eggs on Easter, trying to make some money. Like, how did you know you were? Yeah. (laughs) I used to win like the coloring contest at the Red River X. I remember even in dance class, it was six, like all this, the, we were performing and all the dancers got off sideways and I figured out the routine and brought everyone back together. I'm six years old. Like I've always been, I guess, leadership. I can wiggle, like I can wiggle my way out of anything, Mm -hmm. but it's not so much that I'm being manipulative i just trust my intuition and i'm strategic so i kind of knew that about myself pretty well um and then yeah just creatively i also have a psychology background so i just saw things a little differently right so did you ever work for anyone that you were just like i this is not 
going well? You know what? Actually, I feel like I had great success with all my jobs. There's one place that where, you know, that I was at before that was like, oh, not the right fit for me, but yep. there's always great takeaways from it. Right. So I'm my life, the way I live it is silver linings and everything. It's just up for you to be able to see it and take it. Yeah. So every, I feel like every job I had was a gift. And I think because I grew up with business owners around me, whether it's like finance, lawyers, doctors, dentists, you name it, people who own their own companies. I just always knew about that rigor and busting your butt. And yeah, it's just, it's kind of in my DNA. Interesting. Yeah. Um, your mentoring program. So I I saw this on your website mm-hmm. and I thought it was actually really cool. And you've already mentioned it. Um, you mentioned that it was kind of big in, is it big in the, the entire interior design industry? Like, is that the norm or was that just kind of where the path that you guys took? I feel like it should be. Yeah. I don't know if everyone talks about it. And actually, I don't know that every firm actively does it, but it should be. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Within your firm, you're, you're, you have mentees, mentorees, um, are they, are you looking at them as potentials for, to hire, you know, is it, is it that sort of thing? Mm, I don't think that's the premise of it. I think it's just, we get calls all the time from students or designers that are looking to go on their own and they're always picking our brains. And I think it's because we're approachable. And at the end of the day, I think we're nice people. Um, and we have put ourselves out there, you know, through social media since day one, mm-hmm. we were one of the first like smaller firms or actually one of the first firms in Winnipeg to do yeah. it aggressively. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're just someone people relate to, to whatever degree it is. And then it was like, oh, we realized there's a bit of a hole there. Um, mm-hmm. why not give it a go? Um, when I was in school, I used to TA. So I taught like an intro for design course. I was a part of studio, um, when I was in my master's. So I always loved, like, I actually started my master's cause I wanted to teach. Then I threw my thesis in the garbage and didn't do that. But that's another story. But, uh, no, I think we just, we, we were given such good experiences. Like I said, either, whether they were the good, the bad, or ugly, there were things that really mm-hmm. formed what we did. And that, that goes into why we had a 200 page business plan. Yeah. Cause we knew a lot. Mm-hmm. So what has, what has the growth looked like over the last? 10 years. Oh my God, it's bananas. <laughs> so you said you crushed five years of plans in a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, the biggest thing is the size, like the scale and scope of the projects we're working on now are so much bigger. Right. And I think bigger than we ever imagined. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. In a great way. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. When we first started, we're approachable people and we wanted design to be accessible to a lot of people. Obviously, you have to pivot as project yes. loads come in and there's only so much capacity that you can take on. Yep. Sometimes the smaller jobs can just, they take as much time as the larger jobs with the emotional management and the file management and the meetings. So we've had to like reevaluate a little bit as we've received mm-hmm. these larger jobs. But at the end of the day, for us, it's like, what's the project does the project have a good point of view, a good narrative? Is there something exciting that we can get across? So sometimes it might just be a kitchen, which rarely we don't have time for these days or a main level, but it, sometimes we'll take on a project because we're like, oh my gosh. So it's I just, super interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's an excited story. We want to be part of that. Or we yeah. believe in your small business. Like, let us ride that wave with you. Yeah. And what we've been able to do, um, because you still want to keep that accessibility factor. And we know that, you know, not everyone it is a luxury at the end of the day to be mm. able to afford interior design services. But we did put together a 90 minute virtual consultation that we've been able to sort of sneak in earlier. So if someone is looking for like our services, it's much more pared down, you know, yeah. but it still allows us to reach a, a wider audience and be have that accessible factor that was really important to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it comes back to our core values yeah. and actually we just introduced a 60 minutes. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we have, um, we had one client that bought two sessions, one for her house and one for her business. And, you know, even I think we surprised ourselves about how much value we oh, can yeah. give again, because we know so much. So we see things fast. You know, she had like a preliminary floor plan. It was like, that's not to code. You need to change the direction here. You're not reading blah, blah, blah. This adjacency is better and giving them like hit lists on what to look at. So, 
you know, and even the way we format it, it's videoed. So it's not a lot of the paperwork that happens afterwards, which would bog us down and not be able to provide that surface service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have a crazy wait list right now. So for residential, um, so it does allow people who want the design shop experience and expertise to have it mm-hmm. and just jumpstart their project. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, you guys got so big that, and I'm really sorry if this is twisting the knife. Oh no. <laughs> but you're probably one of the only, I'll say companies that got their Instagram hijacked. Oh God, that was so <laughs> devastating. Tell me, tell, tell me about it. Tell oh, me what no. the experience was, what happened <laughs> and just how you went about it. I might hold a few things tight to me, but, um, <laughs> and the timing was brutal. It was. So just to give it more context I, of why it was so stressful. I think I was in the hospital, like just gave birth. Yeah. Oh, no. She went to labor early. I was yeah. moving my mom, driving her to Chicago right. to move her and unpack her. And then we got the guidance to, that there was, <sighs> there's just something that you could do in social media. And it, coordinating with our consultant. It was like, yes, no problem. Do it. We walk step by step on the phone. I mean, I don't know. I'm leaning on someone and uh, yeah, got hijacked. It's devastating. It was devastating because we don't have a storefront. That is our storefront. Mm -hmm. That is our way to connect to our people. And we have like, even other designers, like we're so supportive of other, like we're competitive, but we're very supportive of other designers. It's a community for sure. Yeah. And so like losing that was like, oh my gosh, there goes some of our portfolio because we like to show process. There's projects that we hadn't photographed yet and we knew we didn't have capacity or time to do it soon. And yeah, it was people that we have become friends with that we were losing that contact with. So yeah, it was really tough. So what are, what's a, uh, I'll, I'll get us out of the the emotional (laughs) hole here. Um, What are some of the, the, lessons or some of the things that came out of it that you've learned from that that you may impart to some of your Hmm. brothers and sisters in the instagram world oh now we're like that double authentic what do you call it authentication authentication. yes or whatever is that it yeah that was pretty much it like make sure you're extra secure i mean we do have other mediums of communication that we rely on our website i think is pretty strong yeah, like I think it's tricky because it's you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Like mm-hmm. even if you think about the states and TikTok, a lot yeah. of people like their living is based off of that. And if they got rid of it, and if TikTok, right, right, that yeah. would be horrifying yeah. for some people. Yeah. So, but at the same time, it's such an important platform. How do you not mm-hmm. invest in it? Right. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> well, I don't want to say anything bad, but um, I think you just want to really build a team around you that you can trust. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Is that fair? Fair. Yeah. But like, we're also like in the community, there's always events going on. So we try to be present as much of those as we can. Like, it's not just a behind the screen presence that we right. have. Yeah, yeah. Like we had a little event at Low Life. We work with the university sometimes and do presentations for them. Um, so we try to stay connected. And I would say that as much as it sucked, which it did, we were very lucky to still have like so much support. That's right. So we had like a backup account that had, I mean, not as many people, but we yeah. still had a ton of people like follow us over there and like really rally for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually what I saw from, mm-hmm. from my yeah. end when I was watching. Yeah. Was I was like, oh, yeah. that's impressive. <laughs> so know. I don't know if we as builders, we're not even close. We don't have that really that community hmm. a, as much i would say um i wish we did and, yeah. and it, you know maybe something that that we start but i noticed it was it was incredible the support that you guys were getting i know clients really stepped yeah up. so that was like kind of i don't want to call it was a feel good moment yeah it totally was yeah yeah we were loved so mm-hmm. i think like yeah the advice is like have a team you trust be cautious with putting all your eggs in one basket yeah and like, yeah, make sure your security password stuff. Because one unfortunate thing we learned is that the Instagram support is non-existent, Brutal. basically. I they don't like care. I like 20 yeah. videos of my face that looked exactly like me and, and they would reject them all. And the crazy thing too, like we, like there's services we pay for. Mm-hmm. So it's like they were losing our business and they didn't care. Mm-hmm. Right. They had no interest in yeah. I, supporting us. I think it's, 
I've heard stories about like that with Facebook. Yeah. I've heard, you know, other platforms and they're just. It's crazy. It's it all. Yeah. But we were lucky we had someone who happened to go to school with an insider. No way. So I've had people ask us after, how did you get it back? And I can't tell because we can't inundate this person who yep. did us a backdoor favor. Yep. But again, I think that was sort of a testament of that. We are kind to people that. So you use your network. Yeah. They came to us. They're like, we want to help That's you. Amazing. I've got someone I haven't talked to in 15 years, but I know they work at Instagram. Let me see what I can do. That's amazing. And boom, it was resolved within a week. Yeah. So yeah. be kind. That's which, a big takeaway. Absolutely. That's, that's actually my wife's like number one is, is be kind. Well, and love pretty much ever. Her license plate is I love you. Yeah. Which kind of leads me into, uh, marketing and networking and stuff like that. So you guys came, uh, you started design shop, you came out swinging, you had some jobs early on. Um, did you get enough momentum from those initial ones? Or were there times that where you we you know you really had to buckle down and say like hey we we need to market some more or we need more leads? Yeah, there honestly there were a few times where we would look at each other and go oh god like we haven't had a new inquiry in a little bit and then the next day we'd get five. Yeah, it's and like amazing. we put it to the universe. It and was it crazy count. like yeah, every yeah. time and it, there weren't that many times, but any time that we were both like ooh, it was like next day. Yeah, or the same day. Yeah, it was stupid. So we've been very lucky that way. Right. So you mentioned doing stuff in the community. You mentioned, you know, being out and about. Um, that's really like networking, right? And, mm-hmm. and and networking and word of mouth. And and I think that your projects speak for themselves. And I think that that's probably what's propelled you guys into insanity. Um, <laughs> is there anything that you guys notice uh, with other people, with clients that come in or with other industries that you work with, what is it? Is there something in interior design that you wish people knew that they didn't? Hmm. It's not like the TV shows. <laughs> That's huh. a big one for me. Huh. Yeah. You don't, me. No. you don't know exactly what you want. Yeah. That too. You know, your color palette, you know, you like arches. You mean the client comes in yeah. and they like generally yeah, you might it multiple know, times. Yeah. They come in. Oh, it's textbook. You can have an image or you can have inspiration or, you know, you might want a certain feeling when you enter the space. But at the end of the day, you're coming to us to help elevate that. So, well, and how does that apply to your architecture? Well, all of that, of how does it apply to your budget? It doesn't make sense. You're only doing your kitchen and now you've given the rest of your house an identity crisis. Like how does it attach the new, like there's so many moving parts. How does it function? I'm just going to sit in my kitchen because <laughs> I like it better than the living room. Yeah. I'm going to put blinders up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Were you asking more about like other designers though? I was legitimately asking whatever you heard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For other designers, don't do it, run. <laughs> it could be. So so coming up, like, so for somebody coming into interior design yeah. or aspiring designers mm-hmm. or stuff like that, um, what's something that you would tell or that you're, that you are telling some of the, some of the mentorship um, participants that come in that they really should know about? I think part of what we often have to do is people don't really know the difference between decorating, having a knack, and interior design. Right. So there's that conversation. Like people don't realize that we went through the faculty of architecture. You know, I studied for five years there. Yep. Design's so accessible yep. and everyone thinks they've got great taste, which I'm sure they do. You can dress yourself. You've got great style. But knowing how... Or you can pick a throw pillow. You can, or that. Yeah. And some mm-hmm. people think, you know, it, it can be bigger, but there's such a complexity to it mm-hmm. if you want good design. Good design is about the edit and mm-hmm. good design is about performance and good design is about longevity and knowing how to maximize your materials and how to do proper attachments that work and like moving through space and watching it transform through the day and, you know, you know whether it supports a brand and it you know, if it's a business and it actually works as a marketing tool for you, like how do you make all those meaningful codes make sense? Or if it's for your home, how does it support how you really want to live? Mm -hmm. Like we always say to clients, actually, we're very collaborative. Like, again, we've talked this a couple of times, like our projects don't really look the same. You can tell there's a complexity behind them. Mm -hmm. We obviously love to detail. We love to layer. Um, Our process, I feel like is pretty signature, but you're you, you're you. And so we're always like, 
a do you, Mm -hmm. but we're very much about the collaboration. So you're the expert in your life, your family, your five-year goals. Like, are you going to have four kids? You know, do you, is this going to be a rental property later? Like we have to be able to extract all that information. That's even superficial information, get in deeper. And then we're the experts in the manifesting. So I can only do as good a job as you want to offer. And it's not saying that you're going to tell me how to do it. Mm -hmm. We have to trust and it's got to go back and forth. But yeah, it's definitely like an information bond, trust bond. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So we'll dive into Winnipeg a little bit. Mm. And you had mentioned a lot of your stuff's in Winnipeg, but there's a lot of stuff being done, you know, in different geographical locations. Um, How do those projects come in? Is that just word of mouth? And what's the hardest part about starting to take projects outside of? Well, I think like Spencer Court, who's the architect um, with O101, or is it 1010? I always forget. (laughs) He'll kill me. O101. O101. So Spence went to school with (laughs) Mel and I. So we've known each other since 1998. So he went to U of M. He practiced here in Winnipeg for quite a few years. So he started his own firm in Lethbridge. And he didn't have a good interior design person to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. So it started with him bringing us on for quite a few jobs. Um, And because... We had done remote work in the past, and I had done a lot when I was with EQ3. It was actually quite easy. Obviously, he's on the land over there, but we were doing pre-COVID. It wasn't a pivot for us. We've been doing like virtual Zoom meetings for years. So COVID came, and you guys were like, ah, yeah, we got yeah. this. Not a problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's trials and tribulations, but yeah, right. yeah. in Overall. terms of process, like we didn't really have to pivot. Right. And yeah. Actually, and that goes to like our 90-minute consults too. It's not a new thing. We've been doing it for years. We've been doing consults with Lethbridge because people know it's there now because the projects we do there. So we were offering them f- for years. Mm-hmm. Then we kind of stopped it. We're like, mm, kept getting these wait lists. And so we just reintroduced that again. And then word of mouth. like Yeah, or like referrals, um, like the cottage we did in Lake of the Woods, we had done their home in Winnipeg. So like that kind of stuff. Or- and they referred us to Mexico. <clears throat> right or was that I was someone else but yeah, yeah it was a referral for mexico so how was that when you're working in a completely different climate completely different geopolitical <laughs> uh you know everything is pretty much different uh was there a lot of was it a steep learning curve or was it pretty much like okay there's a few things that are different but um so it wasn't a full scope project uh they did have an architect but they weren't happy with what they were offering. So the, it was a challenge, like even just language barrier. Mm -hmm. That was a challenge. Um, But I wouldn't say huge learning curve, Uh, especially, I mean, Winnipeg, I would say is almost a harder climate to deal with than most other places. It's with the extremes. So that part, yeah, that part wasn't Mm -hmm. too crazy. Um, I'd say the language barrier was like the trickiest part in that particular one. Um, other than that, it was like pretty smooth sailing. We were able to, you know, still provide the client with enough information that they were able to give to their contractor to build it, like to spec that and in the vision that we all all had for her. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that clients, so if they don't have a tie to Winnipeg, have you noticed that clients in Winnipeg are different from clients in other? Hmm. In my experience, the ones I've dealt with, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, because I, agree. I, th- I think when they're coming to Design Shop, it's for a reason. Um, and so it's. So they kind of already. They know. kind of. Yeah. 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 yeah, like the Colorado one yeah. found us on Instagram. Exactly. They just like loved our work. Yeah. So, I mean, there might be small differences, but generally speaking, I think our clients who come to us come to us for a reason. Um, and as Debbie said, we may not be like the cheapest, but. Again, you're coming to us for our expertise, for our process, for our end product. Yeah. 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 We're still competitive, though. Okay, we're so still funny. competitive. <laughs> yeah. Not to say we're like the most expensive, yeah. but we're definitely not the cheapest. Yeah. And yeah. I can go on a whole spiel about that, but you're like looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> so. You can if you want, you but know, if you don't want to, No, you know too. what? It's an educate. What we like to say, and I think it comes from our rooting and proactivity, the way you approach things. Mm-hmm. We might be a bit more expensive because we do so much more front end work. Our due diligence is thorough. 
every T is crossed, every I is dotted, even if there's something to be announced, like an odd spec that's there, we might, we're already prepping in the drawing that blocking needs to go in place. So it's not like, oh, by the way, I'm doing this botchy now that needs to be suspended from blah, blah, blah spaces. We might be between a couple and the client's deliberating and we got to get those drawings in and we prep it. Um, or like flagging that it has a really long lead time so that everyone's on the same page and get yeah. ordered in time. So we do our due diligence that yeah, way. Yeah, like our spec list, it will show where to get it from, highlight the phone number, we'll say what the lead time is, it's bolded. Mm -hmm. So when it's not order, it's not an us thing. <laughs> like we know. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and we'll have kickoff meetings with our contractors. We want to make sure that we flag those items and nothing is missed. Long story short, we might be a little bit more upfront because we do that due diligence. However, your build out's going to be on time or record breaking speed. Except for it's been tough with like lead times with COVID. obviously the climate as yeah. a result of COVID. Yep. Um, and at the end of the day, because we are able to mitigate errors, the overall cost is cheaper. So we're constantly trying to educate people like don't try to objectify your consulting cost and then your GC cost. Look at it from a gestalt perspective, beginning to end, because we will save you money. Mm -hmm. Like we've actually <clears throat> had people walk into some projects, know that we would say what the cost was. And it was like information we were allowed to share. And then it was like, if XYZ designer would have done it, it would have been three times the amount. Like we don't double dip. We only sell our intelligence. We only sell our time. Yep. So we're going to lean into our value and everything we specify and work towards adding to the project is what's best for the client, what's best for the project. And there's like, it's an objective decision. It's not something that we're going to profit from. Right. Yeah. Well, and you had that one stat, uh, especially for commercial projects, because, oh, yeah. and you can, yeah, tell the story, but basically it's, you know, time is money. Yeah. Yeah. We had a client who said, and it was their third location. Yeah. And so we were a new designer for them and they came to us because they knew we were efficient. And they said, for every month that I'm not open, I lose a hundred thousand dollars in sale. Okay, so now just imagine you're watching these businesses. We knew that shop should be 16 weeks because we know that a restaurant with that complexity was 16 weeks. Our drawings were so tight, mm -hmm. got the tender, got it approved, plus minus all of our trades that or all of our contractors that mm -hmm. bid on it were within $5,000, which means our drawings were tight. Then it was built out to spec on time. So they didn't lose their... Let's say if they were three months late, which their last project was, their $6,000 a month rent times three, 18 grand and $300,000 in sales, or we're $5,000 more for design. Right. You do the math. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's tough, like, because we will lose projects because we're honest. Yep. Um, but sometimes those clients come, come back, back after. They well, refer us. Yeah. Hindsight, or that. Hindsight is, yeah. uh, is a bitch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we're confident with that. Like we're confident enough to know that they might walk away from us because we're going to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is what it is what it is. Um, but yeah, they either come back or they refer us to the next person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. We're pretty lucky that way. Mm -hmm. You guys operate out of Winnipeg. Do you think that there's um, pros and cons to, to being in Winnipeg? I don't know. I've never really thought about that, to be honest. I mean, I think especially with the virtual world. Like, and I think as Debbie said, we've always done it, but I think the general public is a lot more open to it now. Yeah. It's not as foreign and scary. I think that's kind of huge, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Like one of our clients right now is in the UK. So it's like, yeah, we just re meet with them remotely every couple weeks. Yeah. And no one thinks that's weird because that's mm -hmm. normal now. The yeah, talent is in Winnipeg. I don't think people realize yeah. it. We have like... Dwell Magazine, what was it, like five years ago, published that the Department of Interior Design was the seventh best in the world. But Winnipeggers don't always put the budgets into their projects. Mm -hmm. And then when they do, they look for designers outside of the city because the designers who are here don't always have the opportunity. But right. really, like, we are talented. I think also as a company, especially commercially, we've done a lot of, like, I don't like the term mom and pop, but smaller um, independent businesses. And I think, although those exist other places, I think there's like some really great stories in Winnipeg that mm -hmm. we get to tell that we might not get to other places. Like, yeah, larger cities may not have quite as many stories to tell like we do. Yeah, right. we love working with history. our small business owners. Yeah. 
it's really special. Do you think that you spend a lot of time educating your clients or do you think that they're already educated from either a different source or even from your stuff when they come to you? I think there's a mix of both. Some Mm -hmm. of them have like when we're vetting clients, you know, have you ever worked with an interior designer before, mm-hmm. you know, not naming names, but like, let's talk about your experience to some degree. And right. what did well, you like? What didn't, what didn't you like? Yeah. Or, you know, what was like a stressful point? Like, cause here's our credo. We're going to try to, you know, mm-hmm. avoid X, Y, Z experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for sure. Definitely when it's talking about fees and sort of the breakdown of the process, cause we're very systematic. I think people don't realize cause we're artists, but we're quite systematic and organized mm-hmm. and creative chaos at the same time. Yep. But so you've got to walk them through that because there's areas of accountability that we rely on them for sign offs before we can go to the next steps. And if that doesn't happen, that critical path and timeline becomes the you thing. So, you know, it's again, it's not just us doing production. We're relying on you to do your due diligence and your reviews and your thoughtfulness. And if you need to hold, it's just knowing that that timeline will shift. Yep. Yeah. And I find we do a lot of education talking about the difference between decorators and designers. Yeah. And I think also, um, like, because we sort of have our signature process, it's just really walking our clients through what to expect because there's so much anxiety or there can be so much anxiety Mm -hmm. with spending so much money. Mm -hmm. And so when you can break it down into manageable chunks and they know what to expect and what's coming next, that can really help alleviate some of that. Mm -hmm. You have to hold space for people. Mm -hmm. I think people don't realize that you, you, there's a lot of psychology involved And you have to not just listen, you have to actively listen. And you're, you know, a marriage counselor, you're a sociologist, you know, you're watching the whole family fight or business partners, like, Mm -hmm. you know, you really have to hold space. Um, So I always joke, like, I feel like 75% of our job is emotional management. I had, uh, I had a married couple and they were designing a home and they had gone through the entire design process and it was coming down to like we were pretty much done and there was a, a there was a discussion over a particular light it could have been a light it could have been a, anything it was something really small and uh the guy said listen i've given you uh, you know i've let you make all these decisions mm. but I, I i even let the roof that i don't like be on this house and the entire design team, myself included, everyone turned and I was like, you don't like the roof, like the roof line. What? It's a biggie. And, yeah. And it was just like, that was building up and building up and building up. We ended up, we, we redesigned it. What? Yeah. The whole thing was, went, went to redesign. Wow. Because that's was after like, install or? No, no, no. This was just initial preliminary wow. design. But it was the, the, the concept of like how much of an emotional journey it, it is. Now, in the pre framing for building, we even do something that I paint out the entire emotional journey for them. It's actually really interesting. And, and there's a, there's a pictograph that goes with it. And it's like, okay, we're going to do drywall. You're going to be really excited here. But then as time goes by and, you know, we're going to start painting and that's going to be cool. But then we're going to get into this little lull here and this is how you're going to feel here. And then we're going to do this. And like, it's just this constant up and down. Yeah, totally. Like it's really neat. And we'll know too. We're like, oh, this primer on the walls. We're getting a call. It's the wrong paint color. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, ledge. <laughs> Talking off the ledge time. You just put them through to an answering machine. Yeah. If you're calling about your primer color. <laughs> it will be resolved or in like, two days. Yeah, one piece of the project is installed and nothing, like no context with anything else. And they panic. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. made a mistake. Yeah, like, no, just, there's five them, other layers yeah. that are coming into place. Stop visiting finish. site every day. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. So Winnipeg, is there anything and and I've, I've got a part two to this. Okay. What is it about Winnipeg that you you love. I kind of love that two degrees of separation that we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the scale of it. I mean, I think you can still meet new people, but you have those connections and you can create those communities. Yeah. Um, it's a lot easier when you meet someone and you're like, Oh, I know this, but Oh, you know that? Oh, look at that. Hey, we have someone in common. Yeah. Already. 
It's kind of neat. Yeah, I really like it too. Like I've lived in Taiwan for a couple of years. I've traveled a bunch, but Winnipeg's always been home. I, I mean, I personally, in addition to what you said, I totally agree. I love that you can take off and yep. have other experiences in a and on budget, like it's not an expensive plate. Well, it's getting more expensive, but you can you can see the world mm-hmm. and then bring that yeah, back, which is very important for design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's like a bit of a gem. Like when you think about our restaurant scene, our mm-hmm. art scene, like it's you have amazing. Restaurants. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. a lot of people say that there's nothing to do in Winnipeg, but I think they're just not looking. That could be. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We have an amazing zoo. Like I know it sounds silly, but there's actually like a lot of. Like gems. Yeah. yeah. The Forks, Human Rights, our yeah. festivals. That's right. Cottage Country. Festivals are huge. Yeah. 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 I yeah, see. Comedy Fest, I think, is on right now. Is it? Yeah. I know. Like, there's so much that, <laughs> Can't you know, know or yeah. like Fringe Fest is really neat. Yeah. 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 We have like a ton of universities. So here is the newest section of the show. Okay. It's called the Winnipeg Shout Out, where we... Give okay. a shout out to either a person or a place or a thing or something about Winnipeg that we really love. Um, that they can either they're killing it or it's someplace that you go or just anything. I'll go first. Okay. Huge shout out to Burrito Del Rio. Amazing. It's like my number one go to. I will stop there whenever I possibly can. They do not pay me to say this. But it makes me happy to go in that place. And it's just incredible. I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been. But yes, very it is good. just yeah. like, it's my top burrito place ever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I feel so on the spot. I know. You did mention the forks. That that was something. I don't know if that's big for you or not. I'm going to say a human. Leon was- Way. Dr. Leon Way, who I know is on here. He is a gem. He's a gem. He's the unicorn in my life. That's amazing. Yeah. And so he was a two-time client. He's become my doctor and he's become family. And he's just a mover and shaker in the city. And yeah, yeah. one of the best people to know. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Leon. <laughs> Love you. Oh, I don't know. That's tough. I feel like there's so many things. But just in my life right now, um, the pavilion at Assiniboine Park on the second and third floor, they have a collaboration with the WAG and you can go for free. They have art galleries. Um, and my daughter loves art. So we've been going there a lot and it's just a really neat place. Um, like in the, on the second floor in the main area, there's like a bunch of local artists and like different artists that they change up. So it's just a neat place to, to hang out and it's, yeah, it's free. That's so kind of nice. Yeah. Something to do on a rainy day. <laughs> you guys crushed that. That was super easy. Well done. <laughs> well done. How, how have things been since, uh, having a child? How, how different, how the same? There's challenges for sure. Yeah. Um, I think what's tricky too is I feel like Design Shop was my first child. I don't know how else to say that, but yeah. um, so it's hard to kind of take time and energy away from Design Shop. Right. Um, but it's been great. Like, she, I'm very lucky. She's a great, a great kid. How old now? Uh, she's 15 months. But yeah, I think the biggest thing is like you just you never stop. So it's like, I'm working all day and then I'm with her and then she goes to bed and I go to bed cause I have nothing left yeah. mm-hmm. at all. <laughs> um, but it's great. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you guys do on a daily that you just have? I know you do a lot of yoga, mm-hmm. um, any routines, anything like that, that really you've, you've, whether you've thought about it or not, but if you don't do them, it affects you guys quite a bit. Yoga. One hundred percent. It's like in the calendar. No, it's actually says non-negotiable, like and it. the odd time I get booked on it, not by the designers, just like a client. That's their only time ever. But yeah, it and makes then, me and a better then you human. Hold a grudge, clearly. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> it's documented and noted. No, definitely yoga. I feel like it makes me a better human, and I truthfully, the way it works is I I wake up early, so I get about three hours worth of work down where no one wants a piece of me. Then I go to yoga, which is like my lunch hour, and then my cup is full, and I can dive mm-hmm. into other things. Beautiful. Yeah, I feel like no, I my life is so different with mm-hmm. a with a baby. Uh, <laughs> we're just in survival mode. I completely yeah. understand. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is 25 weeks right now. Oh, oh congratulations. And just like my three-year-old is sick right now. And just. Yeah. It's a gong show. 
It's yeah. a dog show every day. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. My husband's job, like he's not home a lot. So it's a lot. It's a lot. But it's good. Like it's all good things. But yeah, I would say there's probably things I should implement to make my life better. But I just haven't even got there yet. Like we're doing some things for the office. Yes, like, absolutely. Obviously, I went through my own medical stuff. Amanda's had a baby. We've actually had the fourth baby in two and a half years with Design Shop. Wow. You know, me being sick. And uh, so we're doing things that allow us to have a bit more space. So our we call them Do Not Disturb Fridays, where the designers can completely take it off. Or if they want just a day of silence where no one ha- can have a piece of them. Mm-hmm. That's a them thing. They choose yeah. how they want to work their schedule. Yeah. But that's trying, been huge. Yeah, that's yeah. been huge for us. So even, you know, if we feel like we have to get a couple of hours of work in, the designers can't schedule us for a design scrum or a red line or a meeting and clients don't know we've announced it and we just own it. And it, yeah, I think we're listening to life and Mm -hmm. trying to make work support it Mm -hmm. so we can be better at work. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Who or what are the biggest influences in your lives in regards to your business? Hmm. I know that that mentoring has been a big part of your lives. Do you, do you think that going through those programs really shaped who who you are? I not as a human, like not as my personality, but definitely for my work ethic and exposing me to I mean it's a multifaceted industry. It's complex. If the more you know, the more you know, you know, or the more you know, the more you know, you don't know. So, um, it's very frustrating. Yeah. And I want to know more. So then I figure out, I don't know more. Like, it's like, I, I just want to know less. So I'm going to learn more. Yeah. I want to be ignorant, but I want to do a great job. And yeah. So no, I mean, definitely the mentorship equipped us to be able to, I think, run as fast as we could and we knew what kind of calculated risks we could take Mm -hmm. i always joke that i'm always on the teeter and i think it's because my dad was a lawyer i knew which laws to break and which ones not and i think if you were to call pit and check their minutes like i literally used to call once a week to see making sure (laughs) it's being kosher (laughs) but i wanted to poke the bear i don't want to say we're disturbers but why do things have to be the way they are always things should be progressive and not always so static and just things have changed. So I feel like, okay, maybe long story short, my dad was part of, probably one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I feel like it's almost the opposite, but like where we worked, I feel like we learned so much about what made sense to us and what didn't both like from a business perspective, from creative perspective, from all sorts of different angles. And I think as Debbie said, it sort of allowed us to shape our business with what was important to us. Mm -hmm. So we kind of saw a bit of an old school way and with, you know, and that's just how it was. It's not like it was just them doing it like that, but Mm -hmm. we saw this old way of doing things and we said, well, why? Why? And that allowed us to shape this new. And it wasn't even, I don't think that we saw other people doing that. It was that that's just what made sense to us and how we want it to be as a company. Mm -hmm. And so much of a design shops culture um, is just organic of who we are. Like it wasn't manufactured in any way. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> like people are like, oh, your brand is so blah, blah. It's like literally an yeah. extension. That's, it's my that, right arm. It's just who we are. It's yeah. just yeah. who we are. Yeah. 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 I've noticed that too. I've noticed that the more I'm authentic, the more that I come out and be like, this is how I live my life. These are my values in my personal life. So we're just going to use those same values in my company. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Like it's actually why we're a cost plus builder. It's, it's why we're an open book builder actually, mm-hmm. because I just, I don't, if someone's like, why are you, you know, how much are you charging me for your risk? Right. And then you're like, well, there's these factors, these factors. And they're like, well, I don't agree with that here. I'm just like, listen, here's where your money's going. This is what we agreed on. There you go. Right. Like I'm, I'm an open book in my, in my personal life. I'm an open book in business too. So I'm just, whether that's good or not, I don't know. I probably lose a lot of jobs because of it, but uh, I find that it, it, it aligns people a lot better. And I've also noticed that by sharing my, my principles and my values and everything, especially in like YouTube and and podcasting and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. it actually scares the assholes away. Like it keeps (laughs) bad clients away from me. Which is an asset. It's really interesting. Like I, I haven't had really a lot of, bad clients, which has been really nice. 
you said a word that I think we hold really tight to is alignment. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's some sexy jobs, but as soon as we see a couple of red flags, we're like, not our people. You know, like you can't just chase. Like I always joke too, we're not the coolest designers. Like there's a lot of designers there that. Really? No, but I mean, we just are. Have seen your website? (laughs) But we just are who we are. We're not trying to posture. We're not trying to be a certain aesthetic. We're not trying to be a certain attitude. You know, design at the end of the day, it's intimidating to a lot of people. And there's an air of pretentiousness. And we're just like, what? Like, it's just not who we are. Yeah, I love it. Like we have meetings on the floor. Yeah, a lot. A lot. That would hurt my back so <laughs> yeah. much. We have clients that want to come. On the next job that we work together, yeah. we, I can't sit We don't the have floor. to be on the floor, okay, but, but more so we can be. Yeah. Yeah. We have clients like partners at Aikens who like beg to have meetings at my house instead because <laughs> we're home based yeah. because they love my cat. My cat will sit on their lap. Like they just love, mm-hmm. I think, the casualness about it so we can actually just have true conversations. And not have to get through the BS. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your schedule. Um, I don't, I know it's probably even getting warm in here. Um, I won't take you too much time, but I've got one last question. The, there, there is the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. And so you knew you were coming here. You didn't know what I was going to ask you, but is there anything that was like, oh, I hope you ask me this because I've got a bang up answer for it. Hmm. I don't think I had that, but I said to Amanda, I wonder if he's going to have us ask what we would say about each other. But it's not that I wanted you to ask that. <laughs> so my last question is, is if somebody asked you how right. you felt about each other. Oh, I think we love each other. We're like sisters. Yeah. And we trust each other. Like if she screws up, you know, she's a human being. I know with my heart Mm -hmm. and every fiber of my body that it's just something that happened and she's put all effort in and she's been conscientious and we're going to get through it. I don't get mad. I don't feel like she let me down. Like we know that she's so conscientious. I think, I think it's mutual. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No, Debbie is like a little tornado. She's like one of the smartest people I know. And I like, will sometimes clean up after her, but it's great. We have a lot of fun. She just trusts my process. 100%. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Well, I think (laughs) we genuinely, like, as I said, this is our baby. And I think we... We birthed it together. Yeah, we did. (laughs) And I think there's like a trust there that we have the, our baby's best interest at heart. And so we would never do anything to jeopardize that. Yeah. There's yeah. never been a pointing finger. There's never no. been an upset. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we're like, okay, I need a breather from you. Of course. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we're tired. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, she's literally my sister. So um, from the first time we sat down at Joey's, I yeah. don't know how many years ago, six, maybe. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always liked how you guys have approached stuff. I've, I've always liked your, your authenticity, your energy, uh, your designs clearly, but, um, I, I really like how you guys run your show. It's, uh, fantastic. And I just want you to know that, um, don't be surprised at your success because that's what comes from it. And, you know, being kind to people and, and, you know, you guys have a strong network and word of mouth is the best advertising out there. So don't be surprised at all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for coming being on the show. You guys are welcome back anytime. And uh, I hope to work with you guys uh, very soon. Us too. Thank you for having us. Yeah.